Days after Bishop Matthew Cooker's speech, the dust is yet to settle as more reactions emerge. And after Kankara Boy's abduction and release, it has been a gale of kidnapping. What is the way out? This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladendo. Welcome to Plus Politics. Several days after Christmas Day, responses and reactions to the speech of the Bishop of Sokoto Catholic Diocese Matthew Cooker for the holiday season. Reactions have not ceased from different quarters. In his speech, he mentioned several subject matters such as nepotism, tribalism, hope, insecurity, and others. The speech was, however, uh, uh, the, the speech was, however, gotten negative feedback from several parties, including the Northern Elders Forum (NEF) and the Muslims' Right Concern. That's Muric, while the Christian Association of Nigeria backs him. So we will we'll not look at this speech and uh, to do justice to the content and the kernel of this speech, we have uh, Olu Martins, who is a public affairs analyst. Uh, good evening, Olu Martins. Good evening. Yeah, Not good. TV crew, nice to be on air. Yeah, good to have you. You know, few hours or few days to the new year. <laughs> In advance to everybody. And uh, later on, we'll be joined by Biodun Shoumi, who is also a public affairs analyst. Uh, okay, Olu Martin, so many reactions uh, are coming. I don't know whether you've had the opportunity of looking at the whole speech, because it appears the idea of um, coup or no coup dominates the discourse. What's your overall assessment of this speech by... Uh, Father Matthew Kuka. Yes, let us first of all do an attempt to analyze the person of Reverend Father Matthew Kuka, now Bishop Matthew Kuka. This has been his trend, right from especially at the, upon the advent of this Fourth Republic, from President Olusegun of Basson Job to Alhaji Musa Yadua, Umaru Musa Yadua, to Jonathan, he's been known to be focal, he's been known to be fortress, and he's known to speak his mind no matter whose, uh, whose ox is God. So I thought that ordinarily, like Otuku said, the death of every Nigerian affects me. Because I'm a Nigerian, I'm involved. It is his Nigerianness that has prompted He's concerned. He's not the first person to talk. Do not forget that before now, even the Northern Elders Forum had also begun to call for the resignation of this president. Do not forget that several other persons have also said that the country is not well. Perhaps what has made his own punch is that he has added the clause that ordinarily, if not that it was a Muslim not a full army person who is president. It was a South and president who had demonstrated such gross nepotism and insensitivity to the priority of Nigeria. Perhaps there would have been a coup d'etat. So perhaps that is that statement is what people are taking out of context. But the man has said, among several other things, points that are not that cannot be controverted. The fact that the security architecture of this country is tilted to one side, including very recently the reporting, the posting and reporting of commissioners of police, where the majority of them are for one part of the country. Hey, clearly, is that uh, the man had, was, is bold enough to speak the truth. Ordinarily, we should analyze his statement. He's a reverend father, he's a clergy. Yeah, I'm sure he means no, he's not part of the military. He's speaking his mouth, analyze his statement, and appreciate him for his fortressness. But when a country decides to lie to itself, and they begin to attempt to vilify those who tell them the truth, they will be surrounded by psycho fans who want to tell them what they want to hear. And when you have psycho fans in the corridors of power, 
clearly the leadership becomes blind and continues to further dig, further plunge the nation into the already exacerbated crisis that we have found ourselves. Okay, uh, uh, Olu Martins, uh, and what you've ended up doing is uh, you've not just given us, uh, you've not just analyzed the, the passing of the, uh, um, the speech, who made the speech, but you've also gone into the speech proper. So looking at the speech, and uh, which means that you've given a whole lot of credence, but let's look at it. You know, they were written in powerful images, so many stronger uh, poetic language you will use. You know, he titled the sermon, A Nation in Search of Vindication. And some of the things he said is that, um, that this government owes the nation an explanation as to where it is headed as we seem to join in into darkness. And he, he mentioned the issue of the spilling of this blood must be related to a more sinister plot that is beyond our comprehension. Are we going to remain tied by this evil man, and are they gradually becoming part of a larger plot to seal the fate of our country? Now, this is a concern, irrespective of who is in power, because um, like you also alluded, from government to government, irrespective of parties, you, you know, we know their attitude towards criticism. So let's stay on the issue. How do we take this language more seriously to avert bloodshed, kidnapping of our children, you know, losing the, the, the kind of security that we should enjoy as citizens of this country. I, I, thank you very much. I'm a little bit um, um, taken aback as to those who are registering disappointment at the speech of uh, Bishop Matthew Kuka. Do not forget that His Eminence, the Sultan, of Sokoto had made a statement and perhaps more than once as to painting a gory picture of where Nigeria is and where Nigeria is going to. I still remember the, the speech of the Sultan of Sokoto. Nobody challenged the Sultan of Sokoto the way they are attempting to vilify and blacklist Bishop Matthew Kuka. And I do not see much of a difference between what this, this, uh, this, uh, 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 the Sultan of Sokoto has said and Bishop Matukuka, save for the fact that Bishop Matukuka has made his own more punchy. But coming to your question, government has a responsibility of protecting life and property. And if you leave the plethora of the current challenges and has bedeviled and that, is, that has also been lingered for so long, you will find out that we will, you will find out that the country is at a dire strait from the northern hemisphere of Nigeria, including Katsina State, where Mr. President is from. Banditry is in the highest. Then looking at the other northwestern states, everybody feels unsafe. So we have never had it so bad, minus all the economic challenges that we're having, you know, as a country. So the president owes us, because we have a president that is not even virtual. This president, you have a president that is not visible, that is not virtual. A president that doesn't know the presidency, that doesn't speak to his people. In spite of all we are going, all we are going to do, you not see the president go instead to visit, to pay, so to speak, to inspect animals, when in his own state, he was in his own state, he paid the delegation when you are there. So the level of insensitivity should bother anybody. If I had the platform that Bishop Matikuka has, I would probably even say more because, okay. like Olu, Dino Olu Olu would say, if I talk, I will die. If I do not talk, I, you know, I, 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 I still will die. The trees of nations are watered by the blood of martyrs. Uh, so we have those of us who have an ear for truth applaud Bishop Matukuka and the president, this leadership of this country needs to come and tell us where we are going to because clearly it looks as we if we are going backwards instead of going slowly forward. Okay, uh, Olu Martins, uh, let's go to the political statements that actually uh, elicited some kind of negative feedbacks. Looking at what he said, he said President Buhari deliberately sacrificed the dreams of those who voted for him to what seemed like a program to stratify and institutionalize northern hegemony by reducing orders in public life 
to second class status. Uh, now, listening to the critics of what uh, Reverend Father Martin Cooker, uh, I mean, Matthew Cooker said, some would say that the president really didn't enjoy much vote from the Southeast, but in terms of presence of governance, it seems to be giving them some kind of attention. A, a quick one is the second Niger Bridge, and some will even tell you that even the PDP that they have been voting for didn't give them such attention. Don't you think this was not captured in his speech? You know, my father used to, my father used to tell me that when the market are closed, you don't need to tell a blind man that the market has closed. When he starts to hear the hula baloo, the noise making, the gufao, usually that is uh, that accompanies the gathering of people who are in who are involved in commercial activities, he knows that the market has closed. What people are talking about in terms of Niger, second Niger Bridge, are just drops in an ocean. Let's look at what has, I'm told that there are about 400 parastatas, MDAs and parastatas, almost all of those 400 parastatas are headed by northerners. All right, let's look at uh, the sensitive agencies, CBN, NDIC, uh, Federal Character Commission, almost all of them, if what you have, usually will have maybe a southerner heading the, the parastata, but the other layers of Olu leadership Olu is surrounded, by, uh, is surrounded by, by, by northerners. Olu Martin, sorry, I, I'm sorry to... Um, interject. I, I would allow you to continue your thought, but just to quickly remind you, uh, what would you rather have, you know, governance or appointment? Because I've listened to some downtrodden who says that we have our people there and we did not feel governance. So is it really about this appointment? Because we will continue this lopsided appointment against this administration, if you understand what I'm saying. But when it comes to governance, shouldn't that be our worry? If, if, let, 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 let's even look at governance. Let's look at governance in itself. Government has a responsibility to do greatest good for the greatest number of people within the shortest possible time. Very true. That's the responsibility of government. Have we had governance? Let's look at monetary policies. Let's look at economic policies. Uh, let's look at the the the. Usually how government, let's look at it. Just recently, ASU came out of a 10-month crisis. More than five times fuel prices have been increased without any level of consultation. Let's look at insecurity. Lagos, where you are, how secure is Lagos? I don't even want to talk about, you know, um, those states. Let's look at interface between the government and those who are governing them. How much level of accountability do we have? Because I thought government is about accountability and transparency. Very recently, the House of Reps dared to ask the president to appear before it. And initially, we heard that the president had consented to it. But after a while, I heard that the Attorney General said even the House of Reps was acting or by us. I've never heard such a thing before, where a presidency is not accountable to the House of Reps. The several calls for the staff of the security chief, even by the whole of the National Assembly that has a coloration of both the North, South, East, and West, has not been heeded six years down the line. The majority of those who are security chiefs, who are, who are heads of, you know, different, uh, our security arms, have long overstayed their welcome, even by their own letters of employment, but nothing has been done about it. So, so let's talk about, you know, where is our health sector? All right, where is, uh, where, 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 like I said, where is our monetary sector? Is governance really taking place? Are we feeling the impact of governance? Because this country looks like uh, uh, an object that is just ringing to and fro, or like a drum thing, like a drum thing. But it doesn't look like a country Olu that is deliberately... Olu Martins. Olu Martins, once again, I will continue to bring up um, the position of people who are against this speech. Some of the things that will remind you, if we were to be on this panel, they will remind you that, oh, remember when this government started, the price of crude uh, fell flatly, that they had to work with less uh, revenue. They will remind you that uh, if you are making reference to current situation, 
this is something that is global in terms of the pandemic affecting us. That despite these meager resources, look at their infrastructural development. The Minister of uh, Works and Housing will always remind us that there is no state, he has challenged or there is no state where a project is not, at least the project is not going on in that state sponsored by the federal government. So let's look at the infrastructural uh, uh, development. Uh, I'm sure that if I put my ear down quietly, I will hear a generator working within the premises of Plus TV. I do not think that Plus TV can operate, especially on a program like this, depending on power from the national grid. So let's say charity beginning from home. Let's talk about power which is the major fiber for development. How have we fared in terms of generation and distribution of power? I'm sure that you, you and I will call them, you know, look, so let's take it sector by sector. There is, if once a government begins to try to explain its activity to its people, it has failed at the issue because it is the people that should be telling a government how it is feeling the impact of the government. That's where legitimacy comes in. Legitimacy is when people have accepted that the government is working on its own behalf. But the preponderance of opinion, both on, on regular channels like your own and social media, shows that the song of Fela and Nicolas Okuchi, the Abamieta himself, has become a prophecy. What we have now is sorrow, tears, and blood. Look at how many people are under a poverty rate. Nigeria is now designated the world over as the headquarters of poverty. What about those who are unemployed and those who are unemployable? I went to speak at a, at a conference in a university and it was raining. And right in the hall, I had to open my umbrella right in the hall. And not just at university. It is like that in universities across the nation. Let's look at those who are determined to leave the shores of this country. Embassies of great countries like Canada, Netherlands, and several other countries have our people queuing and wanting to leave this country, both legitimately and illegitimately. In the past four years, sir, over 2,000 companies have left the shores of this country, either totally relocated or liquidated or gone to neighboring countries like Togo and Ghana. So what are we talking about infrastructure? Should the country tell us that it is serving us, or are we the ones that say we are being served? In the times of Musa, uh, Musa Yadua, you tomorrow, Nigerians are saying that's the best government that we've ever had. Let's talk about the rule of law. How long did it take this country for one court after the other to release Omo Yele in terms of court pronouncement? Even in this country that we saw the houses of judges invaded. Olu Martins. Olu Martins. We have just uh, uh, three minutes to round off this segment, but let me quickly read the one that actually crossed the bruhaha uh, among the political class. Listen to this, and so that we put it within context. It said, "Every honest Nigerian knows that there is no way any non-northern Muslim president could have done a fraction of what President Buhari has done." by his nepotism and got and gotten away with it. There would have been a military coup a long time ago or we would have been at war. The president may have concluded that Christians would do nothing and live with these actions. Now, this is the bone of contention. For many people, they felt that even though they agreed that some of the issues he raised are germane and they can be taken on their merit. But saying that if it had not been a Muslim or a Northerner, there would have been a coup. And the question is, has there not been some past presidents who have done maybe similar things or worse things and there was no coup? Why the suggestion of anything that has to do with coup d'etat? Well, I, I, I beg to differ in terms of the gravity of what has transpired. There are even, there are even parastatas that should have a chairman from the north and a secretary from the south. But as we currently speak, like some of those parastatas, the chairman is from the north, the, 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 the secretary is from the south. So tell me one administration. Is it, is it, is it, is it, I remember then as General Muhammad Buhari leading 
a team of northern elites to your state. I think during the time of, uh, I've forgotten this. Uh, Lamadishino. Uh, uh, yeah, Lamadishino. Where he spoke in very harsh terms in terms of because of what his northern brothers were facing. And I remember the words that he used. This same president, as a presidential candidate, said if elections were not free and fair, the, the, the dog and the baboon would be soaked in blood. So I, 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 I don't see in fairness. If Matukuka was from, was from the southern part But you know that has been argued that, that it was me. quoted out of context. You know that has been argued over and over that it was quoted out of context. But I'm looking at the sensitivity of being a Muslim, being a northerner, if it is not these two factors, there would have been a coup. We thought we are done with coup. We thought that this belongs to our, you know, painful past. What, what the man is trying to say, in fairness to him, is the fact that some, a part of this country consider themselves superior citizens to the rest of the part of the country. And clearly, by the distribution or redistribution of our common patrimony, that again has been demonstrated. Statistics cannot fail. 400 um, uh, parasitas and agencies across the country, the security architecture, sensitive position. Statistics, the statistics are there to say no, and I stand to be corrected, Coyote. There yeah. is no government that I know that, ha that the gravity of teasing, of nepotism, is as in-depth as has been demonstrated okay. by this leadership. And there's no government that has been silent on very major issues as this president has been. Perhaps okay. President Moshe, Hello, Mohamed, Mohamed Buhari, with all due respect to him, will go down as the most silent, non-speaking and perhaps non-acting president that this country has known, not only in this republic, but since inception, since the gain independence in 1960. Olu Martins, probably, Martins. probably I should tell our viewers that uh, you are also Reverend Olu Martin. So I will not be surprised if after now we also see your own sermon uh, uh, generating this kind of controversy. Thank you once again, Olu Martins, for your time. The more people who speak, the better for the country. Thank you so much, All Olu Martins. All people need to triumph is for, is for good men to keep quiet. I hail Bishop Matifuka, and many more people should speak Noted. Up. Noted. Thank you once again, Olu Martins. We will take a short break now. And when we return, the disturbing raid of kidnapping in Nigeria is up for discussion. Please don't go anywhere. We'll be back after the short break. <laughs>